trying something a little different, a little different arrangement. The um, always changing, always evolving studio. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we even got new decorations. Let's try and pick them out. See which ones you didn't notice before. <laughs> <laughs> we have a new art. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and doodads. Doodads. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, so welcome, got, welcome. Thank Hi. you for tuning in. Glad to glad to have you here. We are here. You are here. Everyone's here. Woo! Wonderful. Yes. Uh, thank you for showing up. With and so tonight we're going to be doing just something fun. Yeah. That's what we like to do. And uh, we do have some special episodes coming up, which are going to be very different. You're doing one with uh, the girls. I have a couple of mom friends, um, and we're going to be doing a show together. Yeah. And that should be coming up next, if not before this. I don't know. Well, t today's Wednesday. This episode will be coming out this weekend, so then it'll be two weeks after that. Okay. <laughs> I think yeah. we're we're very organized, <laughs> super organized. We are professional organization. <laughs> I even have business cards. He does. <laughs> I give them out as often as I can. But anyway, tonight's tonight's episode today. <laughs> whenever you happen to be, whatever today is, whenever well, you happen to be listening to it right now, it's night. So yes, but uh, uh, <laughs> so time. Uh, dilations aside, because according to one of my friends, time doesn't exist. We're not going to get into that. Uh, it does. I think it does. It really exists when it be it's five o'clock on a Friday evening. <laughs> or when it's lunch. <laughs> or when it's lunch. <laughs> Although I got him, I got him pretty good when he said time doesn't exist. I was like, oh, okay, I'll just go tell the boss he doesn't have to pay you any money for the time you don't, for the non-existent time you spend here. <laughs> I bet time existed really quickly after that. <laughs> you kind of wait a minute. <laughs> oh boy! Oh boy! Got him. <laughs> uh, but tonight, uh, we're just gonna do something. Uh, well, we like art. We love high art, low art, just fun things. Our very things that are very artist artistic value, and uh, you know, art. We have arts, arts and crafts. And one of those forms is video that we have broken or smashed our way into. And to be more specific, music videos, which we have not smashed our way into. No, but we, we, because we, we don't, might. We don't make music, but. Oh, well, Aaron does. <laughs> well, but we don't. No, but he could make the music. We could make the video. <laughs> we'll anyway. <work> <laughs> um, so we, we were thinking, we, we'd been discussing, you know, off and on just, you know, different types of music videos. Yeah, which um, is kind of a lost art. It's kind of yeah, it's kind of dying out. Yeah, we we were talking about that last night, and um, you know, back in the day, um, artists, uh, musical artists made um, videos to get some recognition on like MTV or VH1 or whatever it happened and to be. The box, yeah, you had and th yeah, you had three you had three, <laughs> three channels. You had MTV was the big one until they stopped playing music altogether. Yeah, and then VH1 was kind of the older crowd. Yeah, you know the more classic stuff, the stuff geared towards you know, you know the people that you know don't go on live TV and show their breasts, you know, and um, then you had the box, <laughs> and you had the box. Box was kind of the rap centric one. It it was it had different themes on it because it was supposed to be uh, for you who don't out there who don't know what the box is. The box is a channel. I think it was usually on public broadcasting. I can't remember, but it you could call in. Yeah. Yeah, you could call in and pay a small fee and request like a, a video. It was like 50 cents or something. Yeah, like that. Yeah. yeah, small fee. Yeah, because that was their tagline. Music, you know, uh, we are the box. Music television that you control. Yeah, so, you know, back when you used a telephone, you know, the, yeah, pick it up and die. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But uh, when somebody didn't call in and request a video, it would just play small snippets of all the videos they had, like, in a loop. So it, And it did. It did. It would loop. Mm -hmm. um, I remember one time when I was folding papers, 
uh, my dad and I on our various routes, and one of them was just this coupons. We'd get him, go home, fold him up, and he would take a nap. We would, after throwing, delivering the bee, grab those, go home, and fold them up, and then he'd go and deliver in the afternoon. I'd uh, deliver, or I'd get, I'd finally get to sleep, and yeah, I'd have the box playing, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and uh, I got pretty good. I got pretty good at timing it because it's you know Saturday morning, so all everyone's sleeping off their hangovers. Nobody's calling in, mm-hmm. and it was on loop. It was you know it was this couple rap videos, some things I didn't care about, but like every. So it was like the sixth one or whatever, this loop, mm-hmm. six video loop, Bloodhound Gang Mope would come on. <laughs> Holy macaroni. Holy, Holy macaroni. macaroni. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I got good, pretty good at timing the uh, the mute button. <laughs> or, you know, raising the volume up and down. <laughs> so uh, tonight we kind of uh, picked our brains, went through uh, YouTube, you know, and made a small list of our top favorite mu- well I just made music videos that I like Mark kind of took bands and ran with them a little bit just a little bit because there's three bands that pretty much everything they've done you Isn't and I are, yeah. we're gonna like and all three of those bands are on my list <laughs> <laughs> I think I've also mentioned yeah all three of them but it's like and there's also a couple of them that more for me that pretty much everything they've done I like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, whether it's the lyrics of it then that are then re- visually represented or just the story told in, told in the video itself, something about it I think is interesting in their videos. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so this is not a definitive best of greatest ever or in- yeah and i'm i didn't order mine in any specific order it's not like you know no. five to one and i'm sure there are videos i completely forgot about that i'm going to remember as soon as we finish recording um <laughs> because that happens all the time it's like going to the grocery store <laughs> i'm pretty sure i got everything uh-huh. and just as you pull in the driveway dump, dump. i did that yesterday <laughs> 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 yep I was Luckily, just, the store I just, just brought in all the grocery bags. I set them down. It's like, oh, crap. <laughs> Got the eggs <laughs> or something. Was, uh, but, anyways. Something. <laughs> but, anyway, so tonight we're going to um, talk about v- music videos that we like. Yeah. No, um, no definitive order, no definitive you know, statements. This is just stuff we like. Mm-hmm, and we mm-hmm. think you might like it too. Um, are you going to put links in the description? No, because that's way too many, and I'm way too lazy. <laughs> okay, so uh, we'll we'll put the the go artist YouTube, and <laughs> yeah, go on YouTube. We'll put the artist in the the name of the song, and um, you can look them up if you want to. Yeah, I will. Um, future me, I'll, I'll try and put the artist and title down here amongst this route, the mess that's in front of me right here. Yeah. Mm, okay. Um, so, do you want to start? You want me to start? Ladies first. Okay. Well, the first one on my list, it's a musical artist that i wasn't really all that crazy about like i never bought his albums i never went out of my way to listen to him but he made a really good video and the video was cool enough to make me want to watch it and that's jamiroquai virtual insanity because yeah. back in god the late 90s early thousands was when this came out i should have wrote that down but um back in the late 90s i think it was uh this came out and like it was so cool because like everyone was like how does he do that because he's in this room it's so smooth it's so smooth he's in this room and the floor is just like moving all over the way he's like he's like walking and standing still and it's one of those it wasn't all done in one shot but it's made to look like it's done in one shot with the editing because every now and then it'll pan down and look at something and pan back up and he's in a different room with like different i thought it was done in one shot no 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 because they switched the room around and oh, okay. like so took away furniture and put oh. furniture in and stuff like that. Okay, so. so that doesn't count as one shot if you've panned away from a s- panned away? Yeah, you panned away and it looks like one shot coming back up, but they did it in the editing. Oh, okay. Yeah, and uh yeah, it's just so he's just dancing, moving all around and like the, the He's smooth too. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's a scrawny little bugger. He is. But um he's wiry. He's wiry. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, but yeah, the video was so cool, and I still listen to it and watch it today. And it's like you know, now I know how they did it. 
but it's still cool. It's still cool, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but and I mean that kind of sets the tone that w- the videos we like. It's because they're smooth, because they're interesting, they're because there's something unique about it. Yeah, I like things. I like music videos that are silly. Yeah. Um, also, there's a lot of personalities. Like, yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of really dramatic videos out there that are well shot, but it's just like uh, it makes me feel icky. <laughs> like which one? Like Deutschland. Ah, yes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. There's some cr- there's some cringe stuff in there that if you're not um, okay with the darkness of human history, history. Um, it will make you cringe. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oddly enough, that one is on my list. <laughs> it is a good song. It is like I said, it's well shot and it's well thought out. It's just yeah. not my cup of tea. I don't like gory things. <laughs> yeah, I cannot get her to watch like. Most action movies and horror movies are a definite hard no go. Mm-hmm. That's a hard new um, slasher movies. She won't. That's I, okay. That's okay. Not my cup of tea. Yeah. Speaking of which, I'm going to drink some tea. Ooh. <laughs> All right. This is my cup of tea. That is your cup of tea. <laughs> ah. <laughs> <laughs> Got it right on the first try. <laughs> Get better. Okay. So and, uh, con- why don't you? Uh, Name so I'll one. follow up with one. And well, I mean, segueing nicely here that I will delve into the darkness of human history and observe it and th- try to learn from it <laughs> because those that don't doomed to repeat its failures. Unfortunately, the people who do learn from it are in the minority and the people who don't. Yes. And we are, are often driven in, tra- in charge. <laughs> and so it's like, you know, those who don't learn from history are doomed to repeat its failures while those that do are driven mad, screaming at those who won't, and trying to warn them. <laughs> <laughs> we are driven to madness, screaming. <laughs> yep. But anyway, so... Um, and one of those, Pearl Jam, Do the Evolution. Again, similar with you and Jukumirikwe, I don't think I've ever been tempted to buy a Pearl Jam album, but that al- but that video really points Uh, out the cyclical nature of human history and And i uh, remember when that video came out it made it quite the uh uproar (laughs) oh yeah and and it should (laughs) yeah i'm sure it ruffled a lot of people's oh yeah (laughs) and it should because it delves into how many how similar we are to what is happening today and this video came out you know i can't i think late 80s or late 90s i think yeah, nine, yeah, late 90s, mid yeah, 90s, somewhere I'll, there. Okay. You talk, I'll look it up. And it shows scenes from the Roman Empire conquering somebody. You know, the gladiator puts his hand on his son's shoulder. And it segues nicely between different things. Like, uh, between the Roman Empire and the, the gladiator putting his hand on his son's shoulder. And it pans over to a businessman putting his son, hand on his son's shoulder, staring at a window, and there's a war going on outside, and there's all these factories making bombs, and it's like, yep, pretty much the same thing, still going on. And, you know, just uh, all these, this graveyard of crosses stretching out, and it pans back, and it's actually some guy's box, and he's selling uh, little crucifixes for $5, and intermittently, it'll pan over to this girl dancing. And for, I'll spare the guessing, she is death. And she's dancing and laughing and having a great time as the bodies mount up and the souls enter her realm. 98. 98. Whew. So, yeah, 99. Yeah, nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a very artistic, it's very heavy, it's very dark, it's brutal. And... Human history is full of things like that. And it mm-hmm. shows... And if you listen to the um, the lyrics of it, match perfectly with that. The line, uh, I'm ahead, I'm advanced, I'm the first mammal to make pants. It's like, well, yeah, we just think, our, we just think we're so smart because mm-hmm. we have technology. We have cameras and everything. We think we're so much better than most of the animals on the earth. <laughs> um, I'm at... Let's see, what is it? I'm a peace. I'm a peace with my lust. I can kill because in God I trust. Yes. <laughs> I mean, just 
Mm -hmm. Pick a war. Religion is usually the excuse for it. (laughs) It's like that line from uh, Da Vinci Code. As long as there's been one true God, there has been killing in his name. (laughs) There has. Why? (laughs) No reason. No good reason. Just, you know. It's just, no, I'm right. No, I'm right. This means war. (laughs) I have a book that says my talking sky person is more better than yours. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. But You're yeah. praying to the wrong invisible sky person. My book said so. So you must die. Exactly. And so that's huge, huge, huge. Or at least religion's off to the excuse. It's usually either religion or resources or both. And so that's pretty much the basis of every war. And that's what that video is about. And so it's just like, you know, exactly what we're saying. Those who do learn from history are driven mad, screaming with warnings. Mm-hmm. That's what that video is. It is a warning. It is Pearl Jam screaming the warnings. And that's what I love about it. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't really watch it or pay that much attention to it when it came out. But I, I definitely heard about it. So. <laughs> I think everyone heard about it. It ruffled people's jammies and it should. Yeah, yeah. It ruffled it in a good way. <laughs> it should make you uncomfortable. <laughs> <clears throat> Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. Um, Your turn. <laughs> next one on my list, and I'm sure Mark's got a lot of these on his list too, is from Rammstein. And I like, like I said, I like silly videos. And so the one I chose was Mindland, which is, <laughs> it's, it's really funny because it's, it, it's so out of character for them. And, it really is. You know, they're this, you know, dark they're- death metal band that's always got flamethrowers, fire, giant penises that the singer rides and shoots confetti all over people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think w- for a while there, they were doing this stage skit where Till goes around and murders all of the stage members one by one. That sounds about right. But <laughs> There was one where he like takes Flake, throws him in a giant pot and cooks him. <laughs> they, it's they... easy to throw him around. He's small. <laughs> <laughs> Again, he's wiry. He's wiry. <laughs> but anyway, um, this one, Mindland, it's it's so <laughs> it's so silly because it takes these you know dark death metal guys and puts them in a 60s Frankie and Annette beach movie. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> They're on a beach in Southern California. They're wearing Hawaiian shirts and like dancing and you know doing the bad blue screen while they're surfing, you know, with girls on their boards with them in bikinis <laughs> so and cheesy. it is so cheesy. Yeah. It is like every Frankie and Annette or Gidget movie. <laughs> you know that came out in the the 60s <laughs> but and there's even a quick easter egg there i mean it's you know yeah beach boys the monkeys frankie and annette there's uh them all standing there holding one longboard yeah <laughs> which is a uh par- them a direct parody of a beach boys album cover that's right that's right and there's also because they're german there's and they're on a beach there's a small homage to the great and noble Hasselhoff, oh. <laughs> or Till's in the orange shorts. He's got the orange, you know, life preserver, and he's Bully you know, slow, slow motion running down the beach. <laughs> but it all ends in this like. For those of you that missed out on the '90s, Baywatch <laughs> was everywhere for a short while. Baywatch, everyone ba- called it. It, it was it, what it was. You were waiting for someone to be drowning in the ocean so that the lifeguards would run out there, running slow motion in their leotards. As Pamela Anderson's tits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was low grade softcore porn that was just clean enough to play in prime time. <laughs> yeah. But David Hasselhoff was also the main character. Knight Rider! Yeah. So, um, but the the whole video ends with, you know, they're dark, you know, they're playing a show, they got the fire, the ma- makeup, and big fight breaks out. And- yeah, and it's a very, <laughs> you know, it's a, the song itself is very Rammstein. It's loud, it's aggressive, mm-hmm. it's, uh, it's metal, it's very metal mm-hmm. music. So you've got this loud, aggressive metal music playing, and they're just, you know, on the with beach with the ukulele. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you know, just big smiles and you know, <laughs> playfully pushing each other over and then there's a big dance the queenies. Yeah, and big dance party and they're just dancing on the beach, you know, like yeah. <laughs> it's it's hilarious. <laughs> It, yeah, and it's very silly because it's just you, you wouldn't expect it from a metal band. Yeah, and well, they're not one of the bands that 
all of the videos. It's hard to pin down yeah. a favorite. Yeah. It, and it was down between this one and another one, but I was like, I think this one's sillier. So, <laughs> and the other one was... Um, Dickie Tinton. Dickie, Dickie Tinton, yeah. <laughs> I thought it might be. Again, very silly. That That's kind of their MO. Uh, a band either who... either very dark or <laughs> extremely funny. There's no in between. See, it says a lot about a band, especially a metal band, that could step back and laugh at themselves. Because so many bands out there are just, you know, too obsessed with their image. Yeah, you yeah, know, they really are, and, it's, and it it takes when you're away trying from too them. hard. It's too obvious. Yeah, and um, a band who could be silly and laugh at themselves, it, it it speaks to their character. Yeah, and they're always they're sometimes they're smarter than they should be. Then you know because metal had metal ever since the eighties since the inception when, of metal, yeah, when metal always began. gets this perception of just, you know, this is the Cro-Magnum knuckle-dragger music. Mm-hmm. But Rammstein are way smarter than that. A lot of times their videos tell a story or, you know, mm-hmm. uh, recount some story from history. Mm-hmm. Um, or it's just fun. <laughs> One thing I like about Rammstein, just as a band, is a lot of metal bands, um, especially death metal bands, you have no idea what the singer's saying. They probably don't even have lyrics. They're just going. It sounds like they're burping Cookie into the microphone. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like they're burping into the microphone. You can't understand the damn thing they're saying. Yeah. And they're just screaming. But Rammstein sings. The The lead singer God, sings. And he God, has got a, a great voice, too. God, what a voice. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, he could do the death metal, but still do it while actually vocalizing mm-hmm. and yeah. singing yeah. and you can understand what he says they have high standards well, for themselves you can understand what he says if you speak his language <laughs> we don't speak german <laughs> yeah if you, you know he's just up there leave us for all <laughs> which translates directly to love is for all yeah <laughs> and the one i said earlier wohin gehst du wohin where are, are you going, going where? where yeah um <laughs> yes we i we look up the lyrics to make sure we're not screaming you know and singing along to something horrible yeah. <laughs> it's it's important especially you know if you like a band who's sings in a different language you know if you're singing along you're K-pop, not saying you know J-rock. kill all the children and eat their brains or something <laughs> you know well, <yeah. laughs> but uh it's you know what you said earlier you know the love is for all leave us for all yeah remind me of a meme i saw it's like um it's important to tell your loved ones you love them because life is short but life is also scary so screaming at them in german (laughs) because life is also scary and terrifying (laughs) yeah (laughs) um i'm not sure if i'm conjugating correctly but i believe that would be (laughs) ikhlib do okay but uh so that that's my Rammstein. You got any Rammsteins on yours? Do I? <laughs> Do I? Yeah. <laughs> well, we've already nailed the three. Do uh, Mainland, Dutchland, Deutschland, Deutsch, Deutschland, and uh, Not Klein. Dutch. That's something completely different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very cultural difference between Germany and Dutch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, Deutsch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Deutschland. Uh, I love that they start all the way back from the Roman Empire to today it's like how and they do, you... do it in like six minutes yeah <laughs> i mean it's impressive how it's many complete... key moments they hit two thousand years of history mm-hmm. in six minutes because for those of the quick uh the name german germania comes from when caesar crossed the rhine river valley out coming out after subjugating the jaw Gauls, you will be Romans now. Stab, stab, stab. <laughs> you are Romans now. Yes, we are Romans. Okay, oh, sorry, stop stabbing sorry. It, it, it's nine minutes. Nine minutes. But still. Still. 2,000 years worth of history comprised into a nine minute, I would say, mini movie. Yeah. Well, all of... Uh, a lot of their videos are, are mini movies. They actually roll credits afterwards. Yes. <laughs> so. And when you get that with some of their more deeper ones, such as Rosenroot... Mm-hmm. Um, at Deutschland, Rosenroot, and drawing a blank. Um, Adu. I didn't get oh, Adu. Oh, Adu. Yeah. yeah. I didn't get what they were trying to say there. I feel that that's reference to something. But it was still epic video. <laughs> it was still an epic video, yes. 
Yeah, there's um, definitely a story being told there that is going over our heads. Yeah. Uh, Klein lust, which I believe that means clean lust or pure is lust. Is that the one where it's like the old rockers and you like all their plastic surgery starts no, that's like zigzag. Oh, right, right, right. That's off one of their that's one of their newer ones. Yeah, zigzag. Yeah. Making fun of has you know, washed up guys. Mm-hmm. Uh Rolling Stone, we're looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> um or uh, uh you know, a lot of the eighties hair bands trying still holding on to it. It's mm-hmm. like, no, dude, you're you know, all their plastic surgery like melts off their face and they're like there was staplers like trying to get They start to staple's <laughs> face back together. It's like <laughs> And one of them's like wearing a fake chest yeah. and things like. See, oh, once again, gross. laughing at themselves. Laughing at themselves, yeah, because well, none of they're all getting kind of old. But and also, laughing at others too. <laughs> and laughing at others, yeah. Well, I mean, again, they're high standards for themselves. They're all pretty fit. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, yeah, all of them. Look at their arms. Yeah, <laughs> they definitely lift. And that's something I've noticed in metal as a whole is the the. <sighs> to use a, a zoomer term, the Chad. Mm. Big muscle guy. Oh, okay. <laughs> they all look like Rocky. <laughs> mm. uh, well, Rocky from Rocky Horror or Rocky from Rocky Movies. Either way, Buff. built. <laughs> <laughs> Which I am not, sadly. I should work on that. You uh, can just get one of those molded suits. Those things are expensive. Mm. It's easier, though. Easier, but less... Nah, no. I'd rather, <laughs> I'd rather have... Yeah. <laughs> I saw I saw what's happened to SpongeBob when he got the uh, what is it the, <laughs> the anchor arms anchor arms yeah <laughs> when you're faking it people can tell yeah <laughs> um, but anyway but uh, the episode the video Klein Lust which I th- I think that means pure lust again tells a story and there's a number of scenes in there but one in particular shows is like uh, when he, it's hitting the chorus of you know. Uh, so he just, he's saying so cold a couple of times and it's like when you've done everything when you've slaked every desire every hedonistic desire you've drank so much you've eaten so much you've got everything because they all show up that's the one when they're in the fat suits speaking of suits mm. uh, they show up they're all in the rich car the fancy cars they're all in the fat suits and they're you know and it breaks out to them jumping around in them mm. and the video itself and the song itself is where do you go from there? Mm-hmm. Once you've slaked every hedonistic desire... Well, I mean, that's why so many... It just leaves you empty. Well, that's why so many people turn to um, drug abuse. Yeah. You know, musical artists, movie actors, uh, things like that, you know. It's yeah. like, you know... Trying to fill a yeah. void. Yeah, because there's nothing to desire anymore. You've already done it all <laughs> yeah and that's exactly what that video is about because he's sitting in the limo just kind of this bored look on his face as two women two very scantily clad barely clothed women are like making out with each other getting hot in heaven and he's just like eh. <laughs> just like i've seen it <laughs> yeah <laughs> just sitting there just could not be less interested <laughs> uh so yeah all of their videos uh I, I'll sit down and watch them. Any mm-hmm. of them. All of them. It, you know. Uh, so what's your next one? Uh, my next one, shifting gears completely here, um, is from Beastie Boys. Uh, another very silly... A lot. Beastie Boys have a lot of silly videos, and it was hard to pick just one. That's what sold them, sold them to me, because I never listened to rap. I kind me of neither. missed out on the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, because they're just really silly guys. And so the the one I chose from them was sabotage, yeah, which is is very funny because it's it's the one where it's like a seventies cop drama recreated. They've got these horrible horrible fake mustaches and wigs and the giant and aviators, the giant like, aviators. They all look know, like T.J. Hooker. All, all the all the tropes, you know, them running down the an alleyway kicking a door in you know uh, a remote control with a huge red button and switch and they press it and the little toy boat explodes <laughs> car driving down you know the police chase yeah. they're going down the alleyway and the car hits the boxes and the boxes yes fly the boxes over. there's always boxes and isn't there a fruit cart no, there's no oh, okay. frequent. But like every yeah. chase scene in every 70s cop drama, there was boxes and or fruit cart. <laughs> but it's it's just so funny. It's it's so enjoyable. and um, I love their videos. Yeah. yeah. 
it it didn't make it onto my list because I kind of figured it'd be on yours. Yeah, <laughs> that's, I mean, that's they, the only they, like you know, they they've got so many vi- funny videos. Like I was thinking of this one, um, body moving's very silly. Intergalactic. In- intergalactic. You know, it's, Lily loves that one. Oh, she loves that one. She, you, you hear that opening, you know, robotic voice to inter intergalactic planet. Intergalactic. Her head just whips around. It's like. <laughs> I hear it. Where is it? I want to go watch. You know, she, and at the part where it's like, you know, feel the beat, mm, drop. She like she does that, that every time. Mm, drop. It's so cute, <laughs> and she just does it with this huge old smile on her face. Um, and one thing I love, I like that video a lot. And what's so funny is you've got the three of them. They're in the the radiation suits, the moon suits, or whatever, and they're just you know. They're at the, like, these, the subway uh, station or something, and yeah, they're just like doing, posing in Tokyo. <laughs> and everyone's just like walking around, just like, like that's like, Tokyo. Whatever. <laughs> it's Tuesday. I got to go to work. <laughs> Could not be bothered. They're it's just like, like Japan, Man. It, that's Japan for you, you know? <laughs> but yeah. Um, it's like if this, if people in Japan are s- watching this go on and completely nonplussed, what is daily life for them right? like? <laughs> <laughs> Japan. We need to know. Yes, let us know. Is your life as awesome as we think it is? <laughs> <laughs> Hi. But, um, yeah, that one, Intergalactic, Body Moving. Um, hey, Ladies <laughs> is hilarious. Um, <laughs> that one really is. It's just a f- all-around funny song. Yeah, and, of course, the, the Fight for Your Right, that one's good, too. Um, uh, she's on it. That one's funny. I don't remember she's on it. It's uh, got this woman in a bikini and like she's walking down a beach and they're like trying to chase her down and end up like, you know, blowing each other up and, you know, trying to take each other out because they want to talk to her. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's. And there's always a twist at the end, isn't mm-hmm. there? Yeah. Mm hmm. You know, like a uh, body move, and they do the whole this whole secret agent spy fight thing, James Bond parody, and it's all for a fondue recipe. A fondue recipe. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, and so it's, it's great. Oh man, their videos are so good. They are, and yeah, th- th- and that's another band that's willing to you know step back and not care about image and just be silly and have fun. Because I mean, that, that was why a- inter- you introduced me to that, mm-hmm. and that was what sold me was that they play their own instruments, write mm-hmm. their own material, and that their videos are funny. <laughs> yeah, I mean they have videos that aren't so funny either. I mean, you know, the, the video for "So What You Want" is probably <laughs> made with five dollars, and you know, <laughs> that's another section we've got to do which is the world's cheapest music yeah. videos. <laughs> yeah. Like, I think a lot of those are going to be from the early 90s. <laughs> yeah. It's just them in the woods with some distortion filters on the camera and performing their songs. I don't even think songs. that's the woods. I'd be willing to bet it's Central Park. There's someone's backyard, yeah. Because <laughs> I think they're from New York, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, so it's probably Central Park. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, so that, that that's my next one. Passing it back to you. Oh. Um, well, okay, um, where do I put this in? <laughs> ah, she passed it. Waka um, waka. Okay, so, moving on with, um, you know, me and my love of history and war and things like that. I'm just going to keep continue that theme for a little bit longer here with the band Sabaton. And, again, hard to pick a favorite. It came down between a few. Uh, because Sabaton, for those of you who don't know, they do historically themed power metal. So, heavy metal and history. Got him written all over it. Yes, it does. Joy! (laughs) (laughs) They had Mark in mind when they made this. (laughs) I'd like to think so. It pleases me to think so. (laughs) Um, I think they're from... I looked this up. I think they're from Sweden, because most metal bands are. They're either Swedish or German. I don't know why. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. (laughs) And so it kind of... It came down between a couple of them, and... But it had to be Bismarck. Their video for the for the Bismarck. I think that one kind of that one came to the top. Uh, there was a lot of contenders, and I love that one. It was it's the Bismarck, which was Germany's greatest battleship. During made during World War II, and it took a concerted, 
coordinated effort of everything that the Allies had available in the Atlantic Ocean to find this thing and sink it. Didn't they, like, fire on it for, like, 24 hours straight or something like that? Yeah. <laughs> when they finally cornered the beast, it took four ships shelling it continuously to render it uh, almost Mobile. dead. <laughs> And then they've they the ships that were firing on it were like they had to stop because they gave up. They were running out of gas. They had to tear off because they were running out of gas. It was still afloat. Jeez. Oh, it was on fire. It was you know nothing. Because we are German and we are very efficient. Yeah, they were very determined. Uh, it was on fire. It was taking on water. The sh everything was broken. Anything above the armor belt, above the deck was completely removed, you know, all the conning towers and everything had just been completely leveled. It was just this burning hulk, but it was still there. <laughs> and so they had to finish this thing off. So finally another ship came in just in time as the four that were shooting at it had to leave. And cuz it was either leave now or you won't make it back to uh port to get more gas. It's on fire, it's not going anywhere. So another ship finally arrives just in time and launched a, a volley of torpedoes at it and that was what finally brought the beast down but it took like a week of them pecking at it and a few mm -hmm. a few lucky strokes when they hit the radio when they hit the rudder which made it uh they could only turn do, left do, do circles <laughs> yeah uh they Got a lucky strike when they did that, and then it started leaking oil, which created them a tra gave them a trail to be able to track it because they kept losing it on radar. Mm -hmm. It would appear and then disappear, and appear and disappear, and so they had to find this thing, and it just took a coordinated effort. It, how they took it down is epic, and it's is as equally as epic as what went into Germany building it, because it was built in the 30s, and coming out of World War One, Europe decided. World War One, things got out of hand. Might happen again. Might happen again. Let's try not to let this out of happen again. So that was when we ha that was what gave us uh, the precursor to NATO and the European Union. That's when that kind of started, and the Geneva Accords and the con the convention of the Hague Convention was really when that kind of came in. But then they also started making the rules of war uh, for those that bother to follow them. You know what you can't. It's like use. what it, what happens if you break them? You go to war. <laughs> What's the punishment? You know, yeah. I guess it's only a war crime if you lose. Um, yep. <laughs> Google CIA operations uh, for the curious. Yeah. But be prepared to be put on a list. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There was definitely no CIA operations in Cambodia during the Vietnam War. And we're off. <laughs> you too. <laughs> we're off the air. Well, no, I said there wasn't, you know. I'm just, I don't know. But anyways. <laughs> but now, back to music videos before um, you get too into your history. Oh, yeah. We were doing music videos. We weren't doing history. <laughs> but that was my favorite video of theirs. They've got a lot of them. Uh, both of us have honorable mentions list, so I'll save that till then. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, Sabaton... Bismarck. Excellent. <laughs> All right. Next on my list is I, I had to have at least one by Weird Al. And yes, he does count because <laughs> he's a, ba a singer with a real band who plays their real instruments. Not just a real band, but he's had the same, same band, band the, the, their entire career, which is rare. Very rare. Yeah. But, um, you know, and it's so hard to pick one. Yeah, you know it was it was really really hard, but the one I ended up picking was UHF. Yeah, well, I mean he's one of the three that everything they've done. Yeah, everything they've done. Yeah, and <laughs> we just um, love it. I thought UHF was the most um, best to talk about here since we're talking about music videos. It's basically a montage of them spoofing other music videos and scenes from the movie <laughs> and UHF. Scenes, yeah, and if you haven't watched the movie UHF, do yourself a favor, go find it. And watch it. It's great. It's it. It, it really it, it it really it's sucks because it's it, timeless. It, yeah, and it's such a great movie. But it came out at a really bad time 
because it premiered the same weekend as one of the Indiana Jones movies. Ooh. Or it, it, or something else like really epic and is just totally overshadowed. Ooh. <laughs> so yeah. it's just really bad luck. But it's an amazingly good movie. Yeah. And it, it's got some, you know, um, high-end people in it too. I mean, it's got, you know, Fran Drescher, um, that guy who plays Kramer on Seinfeld. I don't know his name. Oh, um... <laughs> I don't know. Damn it. Yeah. That, um, I, I thought I had it. <laughs> Emo Phillips. <laughs> Emo Phillips makes a cameo. A lot of... A lot, a lot of his of, friends making cameos. <laughs> yeah. Making cameos and appearances. It's got some great quotes. It's got a lot of great gags. It's... <laughs> it's one of those movies that every time you watch it, you're laughing. It's always funny. I mean, the Rambo montage. The Rambo montage. <laughs> That's every Rambo movie. Ah! Ah! <laughs> it's like a guy's like this far away from him shooting him. Nothing touches him. And but he just goes like takes out a whole like line of soldiers. <laughs> and just screaming and bombing a bunch of, you know, his uh historical landmarks, you know, the Coliseum Stat- in Rome, the, the Leaning Statue Tower of Pizza. Liberty, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Eiffel Tower. Ah! Ah, boom. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny, <laughs> and all these scenes like are happening in his mind. Like the, he's trying yeah, to he's do a rescue to... mission to rescue their janitor, who's their like prize, uh, played by uh, the Kramer guy, yeah, Stanley it, it, Spadowski. Yeah, he he was their janitor. He became you know the star of one of their most popular shows, and so Uncle Lutzi's Funhouse. Yeah, and then it became Stanley Spadowski's Funhouse. Yeah, but um. They're trying to do a, a telephone to save the station and the rival network channel kidnap him to keep him from keep them from getting the money they need. Yeah. And um so he has to go rescue him from, you know, the other channel and he just sees himself as Rambo, you know. It's like <laughs> it, it's First, really Yeah, it's so good. And quick historical context you know this came out in the 80s 80s was it the 80s i thought anyway, it was the early 90s late 80s early 90s I'll look at uh back when similar to pluto tv when you bought a tv it kind of came with channels you had your public mm-hmm. access which was stations around town just broadcasting into the into the air kind of like radio stations are still doing now and 89 89 thank you and but that was also when cable tv and was starting to become the thing. So you mm-hmm. had all these, you know, you, your HBO, your your Cinemax, your CB, CNN. You had all these, you know, CNN actually does stand for Cable News Network. Um, now it just stands for We Lie to You. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so well, you had all these cable companies trying to squeeze out every and absorb buy out and absorb every local station they could it was either crush it or absorb it and so uh without explaining the movie too much he's a down on his luck loser that ends up getting control of this uhf station which is like which is uncle one in a poker game (laughs) poker game so he didn't care he's like fine (laughs) let him run it there's nothing he can break over there yeah (laughs) like i think the door falls off when they tried to enter the building or something, something like, like that. that yeah some it's like everything's broken <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh, he ends up trying to like he's like this i'm this is gonna be the time i really prove i can make something happen i'm gonna do something with my life to try and win back his mm-hmm. girlfriend <laughs> well no his girlfriend left him because he forgot her birthday <laughs> again <laughs> again and um he does all sorts of things to win her back, but the station really had nothing to do with it. But he was trying to prove to his uncle, yeah, that he wasn't that he wasn't a complete screw up. Yeah, and um, they took this tiny little UHF uh, station and turn it into like the top rated channel in the on, air on in the TV. region. Yeah. yeah, and so it it was David versus Goliath. You know, mm-hmm. this little pokey local station fighting the cable giants. Yeah, and um. It's, it's so funny. There, there's one scene from it that's never, never not funny. It's this guy who does like a, a nature animal show, but it's all done in his apartment. And he's just got animals everywhere. 
animals everywhere. And he's like, you know, trying to, it's like a kid's learning show. It's like, and he's like, you know, I got a turtle here. And you may not know this, but the turtle is nature's, su- nature's suction cup. See, watch. He like, it throws it on the te- ceiling. He's like, look, it sticks. <laughs> he's like, but in today's show, we're going to teach poodles how to fly. So he grabs a poodle. And he's like, ready? One, two. He throws it out the window. You just hear, I'm, 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 I'm splat. And he goes, oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> and then he shows this, like, grabs another one and does it again. And shows, like, outside of his apartment, this is mound. This mound of dead poodles. It's horrible, but it's so funny. And it cuts back to Weird Al George and his buddy. Yeah, yeah. It's his like, best friend is like running this the guy? station with him. He's like, me? I thought you hired him. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's a really funny movie. But the 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 video has clips from the movie in it. But he also like recreates videos and like you could tell what what he's doing he does them really well like the first one's you know welcome to the jungle by guns and roses he's got some billy idol some prince uh some beatles in excess um peter gabriel i P- think peter with gabriel the, with the stop motion animation yeah uh zz top um all all these great videos like he, Anything they, they, and everything that was famous through the seventies and eighties, yeah. he tried to squeeze in as much as he could and did it well. Yeah, he 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 did a great job. It, that, that was just a really well made video and it had clips from the movie in it and make you laugh. So <laughs> <laughs> that's my weird out pick. Good pick. It was hard to pick, wasn't it? It is. It is so hard to pick. It, like so many. Like I was, just... I was thinking, you know, living with a hernia. That's funny. You know, <laughs> white nerdy guy pulling off James Brown. The nerdiest, whitest person alive. I mean, he did a song called White and Nerdy. <laughs> it's the anthem to most of us people. You mm-hmm. know, and, I mean, I'm wearing a Star Trek jacket as we're doing this. <laughs> I remember With, Eyes Holy Grail really well. We could recite did, it right now. She did. You know, I'm, I've got my Starfleet Academy jacket. Spock is watching us right now. <laughs> my clock is Batman. We got uh, Gohan right here. Yeah, and this is like peak Gohan. This is Cell Saga Gohan mm-hmm. right here. We figured that out by the armor. Yeah. Which was a, a gift from our friend Chris. Yeah. Thank you. And he 3D printed uh, this little lizard, lizard dragon. Komodo ja- dragon. Is it Komodo? No, um, bearded dragon. Bearded dragon. Okay, bearded sorry. dragon. Yeah. De- wrong dragon. Wrong dragon. <laughs> but what if you're coming in here like and it's kind of dark and you're not expecting it to see it on the table, it like, freaks <laughs> you out at first because it looks like a rat <laughs> at first glance. <laughs> But anyway, so, um, uh, but yeah, the whitest nerdiest guy who gave us Amish Paradise. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, to the the best impression of James Brown <laughs> I've ever seen. <laughs> like he had it down. <laughs> that was some smooth funk, man. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it was, it was that one. It was you know. Beat it. Beat it. Yeah. Or fat, fat. Fat and beat it. Or <laughs> it those are the ones it. that every time I watch them, I laugh. Yeah. There's so much to laugh at in those videos. It, just hard not to. I mean, for a while there, you watched Tacky like almost every day. Yeah. When it first came out. That <laughs> yeah. One, yeah. That one was good. That one. And um, aluminum foil. Mm. Foil. <laughs> uh, one of my fa- personal favorite Weird Al videos is Word Crimes. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody shut yeah. up. <laughs> I had these words. Now, B C R U. Our words, not letters. <laughs> Get it together. Use your spell I'll checker. Check yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for and that is something that drives me up the walls. Text. Texting. <sighs> when people do things like that, and, and we when we worked at the arcade, we had this one employee there that spoke in text ease, and it drove me up the wall. <laughs> and as it's like somebody, jk beth <laughs> not just the general degradation of language and thus and with it the, another black eye to the end furthering degradation of culture as a as a whole but as somebody with learning disability it really grinds my gears when i see people that have no sp- impediment per se to their ability to speak and write and spell choosing to do it wrong on purpose. <laughs> mm-hmm. Using the wrong hominin. Just. 
Yeah. It grinds my gears. So I fell in love with that song instantly. <laughs> <laughs> There's actually videos of Al going around and like, you know, oh, yeah. society, every you know, grocery stores, you know, traffic signs and like correcting the grammar on them. In the grocery store, yeah. <laughs> tw- 10 items or fewer <laughs> instead of 10 items mm. or less. <laughs> yeah. He's like, pans to him and just kind of rolls his eyes, shakes his head and keeps going. Puts a sticker on it. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> you know, corrects it. <laughs> Thank you, Al. <laughs> but he's got so many great videos. He does, so he does. I'm sure I'm forgetting some, but I'll pass it back to you again okay. and do your next one. Um. Okay, so big surprise going getting dark again. I know, me? Dark? Moody? What? <laughs> Never. Uh, Ozzy Osbourne gets me through. And it's kind of a dark video, but, you know, he is the Prince of Darkness. And it goes through, similar to Klein Lust, it goes through, it's Ozzy in, like, this huge cape, and he's got this chains around him, and he's very metal, very goth-looking, of course. And he's slowly walking and goes through these huge metal doors that look like something out of a, an old Gothic church. An old East Europe church, you know, just huge, innate, ornate uh, decoration to him. And then the band starts up playing, and he goes, you know, as he's walking down this hallway, and every time he looks into a room, it's like something out of his past, some horrid thing from his past, whether it's the excesses, whether it's the drug use, the drinking, people he's hurt. Mm-hmm. Um, things he regrets or just just general hedonism and it's just him slowly walking back on it and um I, it's this just this self-reflection of you know, and he, of course he's Ozzy a lot of his songs are about that mm-hmm. uh, self-reflection and penance and trying to forgive himself for these things and trying to do better but then falling again and again and again and trying to pick himself back up and I, I really love that it's it's a triumph of the will against your own will <laughs> right <laughs> because as humans we're fallible we set ourselves to a standard and then fall down so badly we do things we give in to vice so often and then for a lot of people they just stay there yeah they think oh there's no way i can get out of this i'm just gonna you know revel in it for because i don't think i have the strength to do anything else so i'm just gonna go for broke and for a penny and for a pound type thing yeah and it's total compound mentality but yeah and but it's also just this him trying to live up the you know the lyric i'm not the kind of person you think i am i'm not the antichrist i'm not the iron i'm not the iron mm-hmm. man um but I, I never hope i never let's see what god it's, but he's but talking about how I get from you i hope you'll yeah. never stop it gets me through yeah it's kind of a love letter to his fans yeah saying that you know you're the ones that keep me going yeah and he is a showman. He is dedi- deeply dedicated to his fans. Um, one para- one quick anecdote of uh, back when they were putting sing- metal singers on trial for uh, Every- subliminal me- yeah. everything. Anytime a kid committed suicide, parents pointed the fingers at something. Someone or just else. got bad grades. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's all this rock and roll. It's heavy metal. It's subliminal mm-hmm. messages. Um, uh, but yeah, some, Ozzy, uh, they, some kid killed himself listening to an Aussie record, and they said, "Oh, you had subliminal messages and suicide solution, suicide solution, or any number of things." Um, suicide solution was the one that was on under the microscope for that one. Yeah, and you know he countered back beautifully. Uh, well, why would you know if I if I'm a performance performer? I need an audience, and 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 you know if I if I tell my audience my fans to to kill himself, I wouldn't have any fans left now, would I? <laughs> Y'all, if Ozzy's making sense, <laughs> and your your argument is really bunk. <laughs> your argument is invalid. If you're really? defeated by Ozzy, <laughs> <laughs> maybe 
man who could barely speak <laughs> outspoke you. <laughs> that's bad. That's that's really bad. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's really bad. And uh, I, you know, I'm a big lover of his music, and but I, that video kind of topped the charts for me uh, as far as his. So mm-hmm. it, it made it onto my list of top five faves. Uh, so what's your number five? My number p- five is from another band who's very silly, and you extraordinarily know, so. Extra- extraordinarily silly likes to have fun, and looks always looks like they're having fun. It's uh, Primus, you know, good old Les Claypool, and I forgot the other two's name. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, um, other two. I forgot. Lear. You. Well, they've had a few guitarists. Yeah. And, and they've had a few drummers too. Yeah. So, but Les Claypool's always been there. Yeah, he's always been kind of the driving force. Mm-hmm. And they have lots of really funny videos. Like, like I said, this this is another one that was hard to pick. And we've got this DVD that Lily watched. Lily really took to this DVD and watched it over and over and over again. Is all the Primus music videos. Her favorite song is "Too Many Puppies." Yeah, weirdly. Weirdly. She just thinks... Definitely my kid. She <laughs> thinks the video is hilarious. It's just them performing live, you know, crowd surfers, and she she thinks that's hilarious. And well, she's definitely my kid, because if you read the lyrics, um... Yeah, dark. it's about war. <laughs> very dark. S- sending very young people off to war, yeah. But, yeah um, too many puppies are taught to kill. <laughs> yeah. But, um... The one I picked was Mr. Crinkle. <laughs> Which is a video that is absolute madness. It's Les and Claypool in a nutshell. Awesome. Les Claypool is in. Is, this was actually a one-shot video. It wasn't yeah. done with the the editing. This is a real one-shot video. Les Claypool's in the foreground wearing this pig costume, playing He's a stand-up playing, bass. Playing a stand-up bass. You know, yeah. Yeah. So he's just doing that in the foreground. In the background, all this stuff is happening. <laughs> All the stuff. It's like they raided a studio back lot and broke into the costume department and just went nuts with it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, belly dancers. Uh, Girl sitting on gir- a giant block of ice. Contortionist. With, no, the giant block of ice had a fish that he caught in it. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. You watched a uh, pop up video on that or something. Or, or some. It wasn't a pop up video. It was like some. Behind him the doing scenes. Com- yeah. Uh, behind the scenes, him doing commentary while watching this video. And, um, yeah, he said that was actually a fish he caught in that block of ice. And he's like, that was real ice, and her bottom was very cold. <laughs> Wasn't that, like, his sister that sat on it, or his no, girlfriend? No, the his wife was in it with her sister. Mm. It was, like, the twins from The Shining. Yeah, they're jumping rope. They're jumping rope together, <laughs> like, with one r- jump rope. So that, that was his wife, you know, that's happening. Yeah, contortionists, uh, trapeze artists, sword artist, fight. Sword fight. Uh, guys on those really tall unicycles. Um, uh, two girls holding a painting of a guy w- wearing with, nothing but a plunger and a masquerade mask. <laughs> oh, so weird. Where did they find this painting? I don't know. It's not even of less. So. <laughs> no, it's not like they made... I don't, I don't know unless they made it, but it's like, where did you find that? <laughs> but like, yeah, all this stuff is happening in the background. Chinese dragons is... You know, this guy who juggles his hats, this guy walking awesome. past on fire, and, you know, it, it's just complete madness happening in the background. No rhyme or reason. But what if the guy on fire was a uh, quick nod to uh, wish you were here? I don't know. But it's funny because you see him walk by, and then after that, it looks like a smoke machine got turned on. It's like, you know, no, the, the, it was this fire, the fire extinguisher. <laughs> Yeah, all this like smoke <laughs> billows into the shot, and it's like you know those were the fire extinguishers. <laughs> but it just keeps going. It the just, keeps, just going. keeps going. It going never stops. It, and I have no idea how many t- takes it took to well, do that. For that guy, I hope they got it right on the first try. Because <laughs> otherwise, how many times can you take being set on fire in a day? <laughs> well, if you do it professionally. <laughs> I mean, and then there's the Mister War. Fun times with Mister Wharf. If you give a man fire, you will be warm for a day. If you set him on fire, he you will be, will be warm, warm the for the rest of, of his, his life. life. <laughs> <laughs> I love those memes. <laughs> but yeah, it's just like, you know, Les is always in the foreground. He's singing the song, wearing the pig 
thing. Costume, yeah. But just all this madness happening in the background. It's like every time you watch it, you notice something different. And they are... Pro that's Primus is the third one that everything they've done, mm -hmm. we just love. You know, it's like you got Rammstein, Primus, and Weird Al. Always a good time. Mm -hmm. We're always in. <laughs> yeah. And... Like, it, it was kind of a toss-up between that one and their video for The Devil Went Down to Georgia, which was really good, but I wanted to do something that they did that wasn't a cover. Yeah, that would put it just slightly above. Yeah, and Mr. Crinkle is a story about, was it an old man at... Yeah, at, uh, yeah that's like a, a kind neighbor, of a An old neighbor that he'd just go over there and listen to these stories from this guy. And that's something else we love about... It keeps coming up in things we love is that they tell a story. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of Les Claypool songs, Aaron pointed this out, that uh, most of Primus and by extension Les Claypool, because he's Les had, Claypool like, has a million different bands. Yeah, he's had a million <laughs> different bands because well, a lot of them are like project groups. Yeah, or one time, yeah. you know, collaborations with somebody else. Oh, that's what I mean by project groups. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like gather up a couple of people for this one thing and then they all go back to their respective mm -hmm. you know projects yeah um like uh, uh oyster head oyster head yeah where he teamed up with Stuart copeland and trey anastasio, trey anastasio. Stuart copeland of the police trey anastasio of fish mm -hmm. uh but the he three also of them, had a bucket of bernie brains <laughs> he had had bucket head in it yeah and um and then there's the duo Duo de Twang. Duo, which, de, duo de Twang. You know, and... And which, a I, new one, I, I can't remember the name of it, he did with uh, Shot and Lennon. Oh, God, this... Uh, Lennon Claypool Experience? Something Psychedelic like Experience or something like that? That is damned good. It is good. Yeah. I mean, and, like, you know, Sean will sing. You'd swear it was John. Yeah. He sounds just like him. But he, uh, he sounds just like him, but he's very much his own man. The music is, it is, really is remarkable. And, and of course, you know, Frogs. Fro Frog Fe Brigade! Les Claypool's Fearless Flying Frog Brigade, which is, is very good. They've had a, actually had a couple albums. Yeah, but. and all of their videos from all the way back from um, John, John the, the Fisherman, Fisherman to Frog Brigade, all of their videos have been consistently enjoyable. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like that whole DVD we have. Uh, Animals Should Not Try to Act Like People yeah. is the name of that album. Yeah, that's the name of the album. The DVD was released with that album. Two discs set. Yeah, one, one DVD, one CD. The CD only had like six songs on it. Yeah. Or four. Four songs on it, so it was very short. But yeah, the... But the you are getting, the a, you're getting two things. Yeah, you know? the DVD made up for it. And um, Honestly, I think people remember the DVD more than the album. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know we do, especially when Lily took a liking to it and watched it over and over and over again. Yeah, but um, but I mean, it's got you know John the Fisherman, Shake Hands with Beef, Too Many that was Puppies. An that was another one I was thinking of, Shake Hands with Beef or um, Lacquerhead. Lacquerhead, Lacquerhead's one of my favorites. Yeah, you like the Brown album. The Brown album and Anti Pop, Anti -Pop. are yeah. my two favorite Primus albums. I could listen to those anytime. My favorite is. Pork Soda and Seas of Cheese. I didn't care much for Tales from the Punch Bowl, but I did like Winona's Big Brown Beaver. That one's a toe tapper, um, but also well, also Southbound Pachyderm is on that album. Oh yeah, that's right, that's right, that's a good one too. And I like the video for the made for yeah. Pachyderm. Yeah. It's a cute little puppets. story. It's puppets, <laughs> and they all look like Patrick Stewart. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> and it's got elephants and elephants yeah. and hippos, <laughs> flying elephants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, Primus, all, all their stuff is good, but Mr. Crinkle, it, it's pure madness, and it's <laughs> awesome, so that, that, that's my pick for them. Yeah, you will always notice something different every, every time, time you, you watch it. <laughs> some new piece of madness, like, wait a minute, has that always been in there? Maybe I'll put that on tomorrow, see if Lily will watch it. Yeah. Um, okay, so my last one, I kind of mentioned it earlier but i still love the video for much the same reason as mr crinkle bloodhound gang mope that madness. <laughs> is madness and it's hilarious because it alternates between them playing in an empty warehouse and they're just giving it just bang, bang, bang. um them playing the riff from frankie's says relax it's 
when it cuts to them and they're in the where- empty warehouse pretending to rock out to an, f- to an audience, uh, it's Meta- them covering Metallica's For Whom the Bell Tolls. Hmm. Oh, that's right. That's right. It's been so long since I've listened to that song. <laughs> yeah. I think it's in the dresser over there. It, <laughs> it took me a minute because, yeah, I haven't listened, rolled out my old Metallica in a while. A long while, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you've got that. And then... Um, Frankie Goes to Hollywood. Frankie Goes to Hollywood with these two gay biker dudes, like, tangoing with each other. <laughs> and it's... And uh, Rock Me Amadeus. You well, know, it opens with that, yeah. yeah. Ooh, Rock Me Amadeus. <laughs> yeah, the girl. Ooh. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it opens with oh, that. Oh, man, this. <laughs> and, you know, but those are the those are the <clears throat> choruses. And, uh, well, it opens with Rock Me Amadeus, and it goes to, like, but the verses are just um, them, like, this conveyor belt of people coming by as they're singing. You know, I guess they're one guy in the foreground, kind of like a homage to the old in excess uh, video where he's like instead of holding signs that he kind of throws he just has like a screen that like shows different words on it uh, yeah it's a dot matrix sign that's yeah. kind of put in yeah doing that and um, and then right in the middle of the song Pac-Man shows up <laughs> yo 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 yo, yo. <laughs> what it is motherfuckers Ah oh, shit here, here comes, comes Pac-Man. Pac-Man hey Pac-Man, Pac-Man. what's up oh. hey, you bitches I'm how crack. <laughs> Want a free base? No, no Pac thank Man. You. Drugs, Drugs are, are bad. bad. No, nope. nope, not to help Count, you, man. man. Pussy. <laughs> He's like takes a huge rip off a bong. Oh, Holy shit! shit. <laughs> and plays the Pac Man theme. It's this guy in a giant foam Pac Man suit dancing around <laughs> for a few minutes, for a few moments. And it Must cuts back. Nothing going on. Claim the group. I can never Pope. fully make out what they're saying. Lamer right than there. the Pope climbs the wall at King Kong. <laughs> Bugging out like Tori Spelling's, Spelling's eyes. eyes. D- something Deader d- than the parents on the party of five. Deader than the parents on the, the party, party of five. five. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and it, it even has a clip from Homer in there. Holy macaroni. Yeah, right. Which I know exactly what episode that from. <laughs> yeah, that's the uh, Treehouse Homer, of Horrors. Uh, Homer uh, Cube. Yeah. yeah. As they're le- yeah, right at the very end, as they're le- they're all walking away from the stage, and uh, it's so it's such a funny video, and it's you know just madness, just this buffet, this four minute buffet <laughs> Wonderf- of madness, wonderful buffet of madness. You know, <laughs> in the word in the words of Gurr from Invader Zim, I like madness. <laughs> <laughs> it's creative, hilarious madness, and we love that. But you know, everything Bloodhound Gang does is creative, hilarious madness. That's what they do. I mean, <laughs> the whole album of One Fierce Beer Coaster. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I mean, this. Oh um, man. For those of you that missed again, for those that missed out on the '90s, the song that's probably remained forever, "Firewater Burned," or as everyone yeah. knows it, "The Roof Is On or, The roof, roof Is On roof Fire." Is on fire. Yeah, that that's the one that really like pushed them into the spotlight. And, you know, that's the one that had the video on MTV. TV and everyone started losing their shit over it. That was the radio song. Yeah. That was their radio hit. Every <laughs> band has the radio hit. Which... And, and there was that one and I wish I was queer so I can get chicks. <laughs> I heard that one on the radio. Um, there was also oh, what's that, what's that one? It's like one of the first songs on that album. I can't remember what it is. Um... um... Yeah, uh, it'll what? come. It'll come to me as soon as we finish recording. Uh, put it there. Got it. <laughs> All right. It's like I don't remember the name of uh, the song, but I just remember this one line from it that always made me go, "Oh," is <laughs> talking about um this this guy like you know fi- you know being with a really grody girl and so, does she stick to linoleum when she squats? Does she look pregnant although she's not? <laughs> <laughs> the, the t- oh my god the stick to linoleum when she squats like oh my god that's like oh i mean no. and these yeah they're raunchy they're dirty they're, they're, they're very, very raunchy. Com- raunchy they're they're, they're like com- they're com- so, com- i mean comedian. there was one song where he like continuously tries you know, the word vagina it's hard to <laughs> rhyme a word like What's vagina. so funny about that song is the song opens with him calling his mom <laughs> I forgot about and that. saying that He's trying to find a word that rhymes with vagina and asks her for help. And she actually goes along with it for, like, you know, a second. She, like, comes up with one. She's like, well, why don't you name change the word vagina to something else? To what? Like, box, pussy, cunt? Oh, damn. 
It's like he calls his mom looking for rhymes for the word vagina. That that's well. I mean, hilarious. she's had one for a long time, so maybe she's heard some other words for it, you know. But then again, if she if she birthed and raised somebody like Jimmy Pop, she's probably used to it. I mean, he probably picked it up from somewhere. <laughs> <clears throat> oh man yeah bloodhound gang it's i awesome. mean and then you know just the ultimate raunchiness uh the lap dance is always oh. better when the stripper is crying <laughs> that, that, that song, song is so wrong, it's so wrong. It's <laughs> listening to that song is like watching it it's like it's the train wreck effect oh you can't God. turn away you know you shouldn't stare but you can't turn away that's how it is listening to that song. Yeah, you have to actually listen to it. It tells the story, but it's a horrible, horrible, horrible story. <laughs> I find it such a... Th and that cheesy Casio, Casio keyboard. Find it such a thrill do, 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 when, when she grinds me against her will. will. <laughs> do, do, do. A lap dance is always better when the stripper is crying. It's so wrong. Da, 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 so da, funny. Da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> it's so wrong. Oh, it's, it's like, man. you know you shouldn't be listening to this, and you know you, know, you, you shouldn't, shouldn't be, be laughing, laughing but, <laughs> but you <laughs> can't stop. <laughs> it's, that, that's what Blake Out and Gaten did. They, they pushed their limits, and they did it very well. I, I you know what I I love a band that pushes people's buttons. You know it's it's Mel Brooks movies. Mm -hmm. He's gonna push the envelope, push your buttons, but you're gonna love him for it. <laughs> you know everyone nowadays is too serious. They really? Are. Why so serious? Let's put a smile on that face. Mm, so like songs like these that would if they came out nowadays. Oh man, pitchforks, pitchforks. And, and torches, man. Cancel, cancel, cancel. cancel yeah. But uh. Well, actually, I don't know. I mean. It's kind of make cancel culture has lost its steam, and it's making back. Uh, making comedy is making a comeback, and uh, there's a few people that have been kind of leading that fight. Uh, shout to J Dave Chappelle who made trans jokes in a uh, in D.C. to a packed house, and people laughed. Mm -hmm. I mean, so I think we're and seeing they the tried to cancel him. It didn't work. Yeah, and now there's these court cases against uh, what was her name that. Um, she got. She was on the Mandalorian, and then she tweeted out something oh, and got fired. Yeah, she got fired, and Elon Musk is funding her court cases. Yeah, a wrongful <laughs> termination court case. Yeah, and she's suing like, Disney. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of people are all like, "Let's go!" <laughs> so I think cancel culture has seen its high water mark, and I certainly hope so because it's really annoying. Yeah, and it's you know, it's, it's like stifling. Can't people it's just enjoy things that are funny. Yeah. No one has a sense of humor anymore. Well, it seems at least a few people do, and so they're starting. Mm. We're starting to make jokes again. <laughs> okay, good. But we're not going to get into politics on this episode. No, but mm -hmm. it's you know, I'm trying to be optimistic. It's like I read a lot of dark things in history, as we've mentioned. But I'm trying to be. It's like, hey, you know what? Sometimes the sun comes out too. It doesn't mm -hmm. always rain all the time, unless you live in rain Seattle. All the time. But uh, <laughs> even in Seattle, maybe one day a year. Yeah, you yeah. get the sun coming out. Uh, uh, but sometimes the sun comes out and there's a rainbow and the birds sing and the flowers come and the flowers bloom, and so things are gonna be okay. Uh, I was actually listening to another podcast today, and it was a uh, Patrick Beck David, and they sell merch that says the future looks bright. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, man, that's kind of their tagline. Because they're businessmen, they're entrepreneurs, and they all, uh, that was, and then they started up this podcast to talk about current events and get, get each other's takes on it. But that's one of their things is that the future looks bright. Because, like, okay, so this is on fire, and this is on fire, and this is fire, and this is broken, and these corrupt people are doing these things. Here's what we're going to do to try and get around this so we can continue to build, li build our lot, build our fortunes, and uh, live our lives, and, uh, it hope the, hopefully this helps you too. <laughs> Because the future looks bright. <laughs> Future's so bright, gotta wear shades. Cheesy. It's a good song. <laughs> it's a good song. It's a little cheesy, but it's good. Uh, but, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so honorable mentions. Okay, so I have five. Um, some of them we went over earlier. The, I have a Beast, Beastie Boys Intergalactic is on there, <clears throat> which we talked about earlier. 
and another Primus video, um, Tommy the Cat. Yes. Is really, really good. Um, little animation that goes with it. Then once again, telling a story. Yeah. And it's like, I think that's what's wrong with bands nowadays. They don't tell stories anymore. No, and the ones that do stand out. They do, yeah. and They stand out greatly. Yeah. So, I, I have that one. I have BC Boys Intergalactic one. And not, not, once again, a band I'm not too crazy on. I don't mind them. But I'm not, like, r super crazy about them is Daft Punk. Uh, the video... But the video is awesome. Around the world. Yeah. And, well, uh, I think the thing that you've loved about them most was the Tron Legacy Tron soundtrack. Tron Legacy yeah, yes. soundtrack. Yeah, that, that, was, that was good. Um, I could listen to that <clears throat> album anytime. Mm -hmm. But, um... Yeah, th this episode around the world, it's, it's got all these different people doing different things, but they're each a different portion of the music. And, you know, it's like there's these guys going up and down stairs and like they're like the bass. They like kind of dance to the bass riff. And yeah, these girls in um, uh, like, swimming, like, swimming caps and like classic like 50 swimsuits, you know, they're, they're like the high pitched synthesizers. There's. You know, a robotic voice, and these four robots come out, you know, and they're the low robotic-like synthesizers. Yeah. And the drums are these four girls in the center stage that are, like, wrapped up like mummies. And they, they all dance to their respective, you know, yeah. tones. And what's, and what's weird, it's interesting, is if you watch this video, and they're, they're synchronized, the four, you know, the groups of four... And they're all doing these things, but they're doing it synchronized, like almost perfectly to each other. Mm -hmm. And it just keeps going and going and going. And the ones that go upstairs, like they like start doing it backwards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like, are they? It's like, you watch it carefully it's like, to see if it's if they for didn't... or something. And it's like, no, I think they're just that good. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's a really entertaining video to watch. Yeah. So that's why it made it into my honorable mentions. And but, uh, uh, Daft Punk, I, you know, I like their music. I've heard a few, some of their stuff. Um, Tron Legacy was my introduction to them, and mm -hmm. then that video. Uh, but they've got some good stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, another one on my list is this one's classic from another one from the late '80s, early '90s. Uh, cheesy and funny is Green Jelly's Three Little Pigs, <laughs> a hard rock version of the Three Little Pigs, and it is hilarious. Bow, bow, bow. Ba -na 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 -na. Yeah. Little pig, little pig, let me in. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. <laughs> yeah, so, so funny, but it's done in claymation, which dates it right there. Yeah. You know, 90s, baby. 90s claymation, and it, it's really funny, you know. Just, just I mean, Green, Green Jelly has a couple songs that are like classic, like children's fairy tales yeah. that they've adapted yeah. to be hard rock songs. But I think this is the most well-known one, and it's the one uh, I know. Uh, probably their biggest hit, yeah. Yeah. And, so, uh, oh, shoot, what was I going to say? <laughs> like, and the moral of the story is that a band with no, no talent, talent can, can entertain, entertain idiots with, with a stupid, stupid puppet, puppet show. show. <laughs> yeah. And another Rambo reference. Yeah. Hey, Woodface, <laughs> your ass is mine. <laughs> they called out Rambo! <laughs> it, it's so, so funny. It's so funny. Um, and the last one of my honorable mentions is a good old Grateful Dead Touch of Grey, mm. which is like the only music video they ever did. No, they have others. Did they? Yeah. It's just, okay. this is probably the most well-known, most played one. It's, you know, skeletons of the band being puppeted <laughs> by like marionettes and sticks, you know, on a stage playing their instruments to a crowd and... It's just a really, really... It's kind of cute. It's kind it, of it's silly. Cute. It's kind of simple, but also kind of cute and, and it, silly. And it's a, it's a good song. Yeah. Mm. That is every, a very, it is a very catchy every song. Every silver lining's got a touch of gray. Yeah. <laughs> I will we'll get, get by. by. Da, 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 I will survive. Yeah. It, it is a nice song. It, very um, enjoyable. And, okay, so my honorable mentions... Um, Falco putting on the Ritz. Uh, I thought about Rock Me Amadamus, but it's like, eh. That was, you know, those are his two big hits. Mm-hmm. Uh, to be honest, you know, um, <laughs> those are putting on the Ritz probably wouldn't have been nearly as big without Young Frankenstein. 
good chance. Good chance. <laughs> if uh, you're blue and you don't know where, where to go, go to, to, why don't you go where fashion sits? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, more great stop motion animation. Peter Gabriel Sledgehammer. Yeah, that that's in the UHF video. Yeah. He parodies that. But yeah, you know, that's video. that's like mid 80s mid to late 80s i think yeah uh it's stop motion at probably some of its finest and the song is him just like basically he's saying he's gonna you know woo this girl <laughs> uh he wants to be her sledgehammer oh my indeed and but the video doesn't reflect that it's just Silliness. Silliness. Different ways of animating a person in claymation. Um, he wasn't claymation, though. He was actually himself. Yeah. But it's just like all this stuff going on around. Like he's on a the roller coaster or, you know, he's in a popcorn mm -hmm. machine. And these two little shoes come by and kiss him on his cheeks and then roll away. <laughs> the part that I, I always remember is the dancing chicken. Yeah. Do the two do do. yeah. Towards the end of the two dancing chickens. Do -do -do -do. Yeah. <laughs> um, that memory card's gonna that memory card's gonna fill up pretty soon here. So that's yeah. We can. We'll try to wrap it up. Uh, you know, all of Primus, all of Weird Al, um, and then one that I know you don't like, but he's kind of a gangster rapper, but he also does a lot of uh, touches on what's going on in the world. Tom McDonald. And he's, he's real big right now. He is definitely real big right now for his latest one, Facts. And I like it. <laughs> I like it a lot. Facts don't care about feelings. They mm -hmm. don't. <laughs> nope. No, they don't. <laughs> now, um, is that for the video or is that for the, the song? A little bit of both. Uh, because the song itself stands strong and true. But they did a pretty good video for it. But actually, that... They did an okay video, but, uh, you know, the videos I like mostly of his would be Dummies, Snowflakes, and Clown World were his videos that I really like about that. <laughs> um, those three and No Lives Matter. Oops, I almost missed that one. No Lives Matter was, of course, an answer to uh, Black Lives Matter riots. Uh, mostly peaceful protests mm -hmm. that happened during the summer of love of 2020. <laughs> uh, yeah, Mayor of Seattle named it that, the summer of love. Uh, if, oh, I thought you were being sarcastic. No, <laughs> no. As her city was on fire, she said the you know it was the summer of love. And a news reporter dubbed these things mostly peaceful protests while there were cars on fire behind him you could see smashed windows and things burning behind him 2020 in a nutshell mm -hmm. <laughs> uh yep. so when he made the video no lives matter he's saying the it's like y'all are being ridiculous stop burning stuff stop ruining things stop breaking things this is just this is not fixing anything this is not building anything knock it off if you want to address a problem we can do it but first you got to stop blowing you start to stop setting fires <laughs> cuz when you do that when you riot and destroy cities you're not helping your cause all mm. you're doing is turning yourself into a villain and at that point nobody cares what you have to say that's why Martin Luther King's protests were Peaceful. Peaceful, yeah. Purposely so. Yeah. Gandhi and Merlin and MLK's protests were successful because of that. Mm -hmm. And also their general message to the people they were leading was produce. Dress well. Speak well. Do well. Be the best you that you could possibly be. Because you, if you do that, making yourself the best you... Mm -hmm. They're going to have to start respect you, the people you're protesting against are going to have to start respecting you at some point because if they don't their support mm -hmm. they're going to look ridiculous. Mm -hmm. It's like this person has gone to college, wears a suit, speaks well and has made these things and taught his children to make things well and you're bagging on him why? 
Yeah, you're mm-hmm. ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he, he also wanted to teach the world that, you know, contrary to popular belief amongst whites, white people in America, that all black people weren't just idiots. Yeah, no, that they were smart. They were smart. They read could, books, read went books. to church. Yeah. Work hard. Work hard. They were no different than, than them. No, oh, and that's why they ultimately succeeded. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And they did so peacefully. Yeah. Until he got shot. But, <laughs> well, the sh- shooting didn't come from them. But Yeah. yeah I blame the CIA. <laughs> Let's not get into that. Um, anyway, yeah, so... Well, his assassination's like JFK. We'll never really know. Yeah. So, um, is that all your honorable mentions? Uh. Yeah, I think so. I think okay. so. I think we'll wrap up there. <clears throat> but yeah, you know, music videos are a dying art because, you you know, back then, like I, I, I started to say at the beginning of the episode, you know, it was to get recognition on MTV or whatever, you know, music channel yeah. you're gearing towards. But since those channels are dead. Um, I mean, MTV is still technically alive yes but they don't they haven't played music in 20 years no it's and just dumb shows, shows. Yeah. dumb shows yeah dumb shows and so right now you know making videos it's just to hope for clicks on like youtube or social media yeah and it's i don't think it's worth the cost probably not Probably not. Especially, I mean, especially now in the age of streaming, because you know, back in the days of MTV when they played music, you heard the single, you liked it, you went out and bought the album. Yeah, now it's about downloads. Now you can just download that song for like two dollars. Not even that. Not it's even like, that. It's like a dollar twenty-five. And it, it's like music artists aren't, you know, making any money off it. So, um. They'd oh. rather make their money in their touring. Actually, it it downloads pay pretty doggone well. But uh, in comparison to buying the whole album, which is usually about yeah. twenty dollars. Yeah. No. Um uh, and most now nowadays most artists are owned by their la- their recording label. Mm-hmm. Uh which one of the things that really makes me respect Tom McDonald is that he's completely independent. That's cool. He, yeah, he's turned down signing albums, uh, <laughs> signing things because they're like, no, 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 I own my music because I write the beats, I write the lyrics. He builds set designs, he d- builds them himself. Because back before he was successful at rapper, he was a carpenter, mm. so he's got his own skills to be able to make. He's got skills to pay the bills. He really does. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Beastie Boy albums, but you know. <laughs> skills to pay the bills, y'all. And, uh, but you know, he can. The, him and his girlfriend, uh, Nova Rockefeller, they make all of their stuff in house. Mm-hmm. So that really. And if you uh, sign a contract, you can't be as free of a thinker anymore or a speaker because you're. S- you're under their agenda now. Yeah, they own you. Mm-hmm. They're going to censor what you say, and he can't stand that. So, for better or for worse, he's remained independent. Mm-hmm. And as a w- as a result of that, he continuously gets shafted by the uh, corporates. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but well, that- I mean, you know, looking back, you know, like, you know, 90s, 2000s, you know, my brother used to be in a band, a local band, and like the... You know, crowning achievement of any local band that goes out and plays their gigs is, you know, one day they may get a record deal. That yeah. was like the the goal the that was the the, goal the to- holy grail of any you know local band is to get recognized by you know somebody who's corporate and be offered a record contract. And it's kind of um, the opposite way now. <laughs> People really? aren't really jonesing for record contracts anymore because. It's easier now than it ever has been to be able to do stuff independently. Yeah. I mean, look at us. <laughs> look at us. <laughs> Bought some stuff off, uh, off the, you know, some equipment off the internet, and then we pitched up in a spare room and putting it, putting this on the internet. Yeah. Hi, folks. <laughs> we know you. We remembered you there. <laughs> and like back, back in before, thirty years ago, you couldn't do this. Yeah. Oh, not even that. I mean. 
when the internet became I, I i'm old enough to remember when internet became a household thing you know the aol dial up the windows 95 Oh, somebody picked up the phone. Too bad. <laughs> always. Always while you're in the middle of something. Yeah. So I remember when that... Or telemarketer. Uh, yeah, I remember when that hit the scene. And I was middle school. About and, there, yeah. um So before then, the only way to get recognized is through a record contract and make a... Hopefully they will fund a video that will make it onto MTV. Now yeah. you you got YouTube, you got Instagram, social media, Facebook, whatever. Yeah. TikTok if you choose to use it. And it's easier than ever to make your own videos. Yeah. So, so you you, you don't need the record contract anymore. Which actually brings me to uh, to a fun honorable mentions uh AMVs. Oh, I know. I was watching one last night. A People who make AMVs, a well-made one, will, like, stand the test of time. Yeah. Like, the the one made from Evangelion to uh, Ingle. Was it Ingle? Angel. Ingle, Angel, Ingle, yeah. Well, it's... Ingle. In English, it's Ingle. Yeah. In English, it's Angel. The but. Rammstein song, Ingle, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it uses scenes from e the anime Evangelion. Uh, AMV damn. stands for anime music video, right? Yeah, yeah. as far as I know. As far as I know. <laughs> I'm but going with it. That's, that's what I always figured it was. Uh, but yeah. Damn good. And mm -hmm. they actually, there's a couple of times where like the mech, whatever it is, is firing and they've timed it the, yeah. to the... Da -da 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 yeah. It was, it was very well edited because, you know, they took scenes and the kids are basically singing the song along with it. And I so, like that they gave Shinji the girls of, girl singing part. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> Asuka's the... the the, the male voice, yeah. Is, yeah, because Shinji is a whiny little shit. <laughs> you know, I would have really liked Evangelion if it wasn't for Sh Sh Shinji. Shinji, yeah. why is he the main character? Asuka was more interesting. <laughs> yeah, she was, you know, Conflict. bitch, but you know, she had a troubling. Well, I think all the characters in there. All were the characters, yeah. And that's kind of the, I guess that's kind of the point of it. But anyway, but yeah, that that's a. A AMV that we we will still watch. Yeah, it's been I still around for a long time. Um, one of my favorites. I I think the video it's the video footage is from an episode of Bubblegum Crisis twenty twenty something or twenty twenty four thirty something. It's a, a Bubblegum Crisis one of the Bubblegum Crisis series. Uh, but the song is Laser Hawk. Um. Shoot, the artist is Laserhawk, and I'm drawing a blank on the. I should have wrote it down, but it's really good. And it's like, it made me want to go and watch Bubblegum Crisis, which Bubblegum Crisis is kind of eh. It's like there's a lot of AMVs out there that just you know have no really rhyme or reason to them. It's just you know scenes to put to a song, and they don't match up or no. have anything to do with what the lyrics actually talk about. But one of I think one of my favorites is. Um, the ballroom blitz with Rurouni Kenshin. <laughs> that's that's a good one. It is because that's for two reasons. For two good reasons. One, it's not a very common song, and two, it highlights the often silliness, o overshadowed silliness in that thing. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of drama in that series, but there's also a lot of silliness in it too. Ada, Ada, <laughs> <laughs> Karu always beating Kenshin over the head with something. Yeah, he goes smarts off. Smack! And <laughs> big... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, there was a lot of fun and goofiness in there, too. Yeah. Yeah. And a, a good anime would ha could have, you know, a, a balance between the two. Yeah. And I think AMVs also give away... Because that's fan-made materials. Mm -hmm. So it gives fans a chance to make a music video for a band they like. Mm -hmm. Um and then there was there's hundreds and hundreds, hundreds of and Dragon hundreds. Dragon Ball Z ones. Oh god. And they're usually to Linkin Park songs. I I, I don't know. Not a Linkin Park fan. Uh one of my fa my favorite uh Dragon Ball Z AMV is uh the adaptation of I'll make a man out of you. <laughs> 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 I 
Piccolo singing about how he's going to train Go. Is that is that an AMV though? Because that was done by Team Four Star, wasn't it? I would consider it an AMV. Um, just because you know, because they are doing a song to scenes from an anime. The song itself is "I'll Make a Man Out of You" from the Disney movie Mulan, and then they used C- Team Four Star made a whole series of Dragon Ball Z abridgment slash parody, and, and they're hilarious. And they are hilarious. Helsing too. And Helsing, yeah. Um, which in its own right was a pretty awesome. Helsing Ultimate was a pretty freaking awesome anime <laughs> and manga series. Mm-hmm. Um, so they took, but Team Four Star took, uh, scenes from Dragon Ball and it's Piccolo singing about how he's going to train Gohan. Gohan, I'll make a man out of you. And I would consider it an AMV. There's one, um, for Helsing that I really like. It's, um, got scenes from the Helsing Ultimate and, um, it's two... Oh, uh, Voltaire, When You're Evil? No, not that one. It's a different one. I don't, I don't know if it was Apocalyptica or just, you know, a hard rock version of Carol of the Bells. Oh, okay. But it's it's really good. Okay. I uh, drew a blank on that one. <laughs> yeah, I, I listen to it every Christmas season. Or watch Carol, it. <laughs> Carol of the Bells is a good damn song. It really is. It's I, th- I think it's the best Christmas song that's out there I've ever been. I'll go with that. I'll go with that. Yeah. It's better than Mariah Carey. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, that one's filled up. So. Oh, this one's actually got a good amount of room because it'll use a. It's got a. The memory card in that one is like four times the size of that one. Okay, well, either way, that one stopped recording. It's getting late. Yeah. Let's wrap it up. Let's wrap it up. Uh, so, those are some of our favorite music videos. And for one reason or another. For one reason or another, just because they're fun or because they're interest, they're histo- they teach a tell a story, they teach a lesson, or they're just good fun, mm-hmm. and all points in between. Um, let us know in the comments. What are some of yours? Got a yeah. suggestion? Yeah, we we'd like to hear from you. Yeah, and don't neglect your uh, favorite artists' efforts to make a video for their songs. Yeah, I think videos. I think a good music video is important and i mean tom mcdonald made an entire career out of it so i think it's still a viable medium of entertainment uh if you go to his youtube channel there's dozens Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. (laughs) and he collabs with a lot of people so i mean it's i think it's still relevant it's just like you're saying a lot of it is corporate recycled garbage of you know yet another pop star doing things that mm-hmm. we've seen pop stars do for the last 20 years. Yeah. So, eh, so yeah. Thank you for watching. Next uh, episode is going to be something completely different. Now for something completely, completely different. different. <laughs> so, um, stay tuned for that. And, and uh, like always, thank you for watching. Tell a friend. Yes. Tell two friends. Whether you got here through Spotify, Rumble, or YouTube, uh, thank you for being here. Leave a like, leave a thumbs up, a subs- uh, and subscribe, subscribe, a comment. Tell us what some of your favorite music videos are. We'd like to know. And uh, tell a friend. Tell two friends. Tell, uh, tell five. Hey, tick, Go tell crazy. Five. More the merrier. More the merrier. You know, it's, like, <laughs> it's like a, you know, it's like a, I don't know, concert? <laughs> no, no. Uh, we lost it. It's tired. We're, we're late. <laughs> it's late. We're tired. So <laughs> We're going to go now and we're going to leave you to uh, go watch music videos. Yeah, we just gave you a bunch of good ones. So yeah. go check them out. All right. Toodles. Toodles. See you next time, folks. Bye. Bye.